Berlin had that aura. And then, of course, it was, you know, the Nazi thing. I mean, there were so many things, so many sensibilities all juggling around in there that um, um, that vibration would be what turned David on, that's for sure. Are you ready to see the show? Yeah! One of the things that we did in Berlin was to go to nightclubs. It was like a speakeasy. You would knock on the door and a little eye piece would open up and you'd hear, yeah. And we'd go, oh, we're um, David Bowie uh, coming to, and we go, oh, okay. And the door would open and that person who said, yeah, would be a guy in drag. The entertainment was, was transvestite style entertainment. Romy Hogg was completely different. It was like a space age disco. This club was for young people. It was like a discotheque, and we had a program, uh, but was charge music that we made with bizarre artists, with, with, with dancers, drag queens, transsexuals, anything mixed on the stage with, with uh, weirdo, weirdo photos and things we were giving in the show. And these were like video clips. And because uh, in those times they had no video clips, uh, those pop stars would all come to, to see what happens to their music. We'd have far more fun there than going to a rock nightclub. You know, this is real classy German entertainment. Everybody was going out like that. You know, every night, every night. But I think nowadays discotheques are open Friday, Saturday or something like that, two, three days a week. In those times, you had a lot of discotheques and open every day and packed anywhere, everywhere. If people had to sit on the dance floor on the ground and then a curtain in the corner opened and then this this power this power high energy show came out of it with loud loud music he loved it he was always sneaking in the corner and looking at it when he was loving it He was such a boy. He was a little boy, a lovely boy who wants to have some inspiration, who who wants to have life. There was like a, a Bowie hype, you know. I don't know. You, you can't compare it with nowadays with somebody. It was uh, unbelievable. I had my club, and I always had my Mercedes 600, and the stars always would get my car, you know, because they come mostly for the after party in my place. And uh, I went with the whole crew to a Bowie tournee, to the Bowie concert, and um, uh, we look at each other, and um, that was it, right? That was it. And uh, since then, uh, he didn't leave uh, Berlin. But he had to finish the tour, that, that even on the next day, he had a concert in, um, in Hamburg. Uh, he was four hours too late because he, he didn't want to leave. That started his love with Berlin. I was uh, 23 years old. Uh, we were very young. <laughs> we were very young. Uh, full of puberty. The first time I saw him, he wasn't stage and I was in, in the front and uh, we had a look to each other and uh, that was it it was like no discussion about it we have to do a time together it wasn't a certain tension uh, naturally I fell in love with his eyes this is uh, the dressing room this is just uh, b b b before the show goes on, and here you see a lot of wigs, and he loved all that. He loved to be in my dressing room, because he was also looking up the clothes. When I was up doing the show, he was looking at the makeup things, and 
trying the clothes on. There was two days after his new look and we made some photos of us. He made his, he cut us his hair. This was like, I don't know, 77 maybe, or 78, I don't know anymore. Something like that. He had some great ideas, and great characters and all that. And I was do something complete else, but also with a lot of characters and, and a lot of things. So it was, you know, we had to be with each other to, we needed that for a time. We thought in those times, we were young, we thought it was a love affair. Well, naturally, it was a love affair. It was a love affair. But if you, if you see it back and after all those years, you see it with different eyes.